bringing you this series of 25 concepts in anthropology. Each one of these concepts opens up, opens up a new vista on what it is to be human. And today I want to talk about rationality, traditional and rational actions. And I'm going to be drawing a lot on the work of Marx Weber again. Now I'm going to talk about initially four kinds of actions. Traditional action, effectual action, vert rational and zweck rational. Traditional, effectual, vert rational and spec rational. Now, let's consider killing a, kitchen, uh, a, killing a chicken, for example. If I kill a chicken because I'm a Jewish person and it's Friday night and I want to have uh, chicken for my Shabbos, for my Shabbat meal, that's a traditional reason. If I'm an Indonesian person and I want to have a Slamatan ritual and I kill the chicken for that, that is a traditional reason to kill it. If I'm driving down the road and a chicken jumps out and I swerve and my car goes in the ditch and a wheel breaks off and I'm furious and I go out and I kick the chicken to death, I, that's an effectual reaction. It's one of emotion. So that's another reason why you might do something. You might do something for a tradition or you might do something for a affect or emotion. The same thing. Affect means emotion. As in affected, emotionally affected. The vert rational thing might be if I own a chicken farm and I decide that I would like to do it in a humane way because of the Royal Society for Pre Prevention of Cruelty to Animals or because of some values I have. So I decide, I don't know how, what a humane way to do away with a chicken would be, but let's say I decide to do that and that is a vert rational way. So it's a rational way to achieve a um, a certain value, in this case, uh, animal rights. I suppose a, a nice way to kill a chicken which is to quickly chop its head off, right? So let's call that the vert rational way of killing a chicken. And finally there's a zweck rational, or zweck rational. And what that is, is perhaps if you're killing chickens, just getting, um, I've heard about this, I haven't seen it at a, at a chicken farm, getting a, a electric, pushing chickens, in, chickens into a high voltage electric wire so that they, they you can kill hundreds and hundreds very quickly and effectively. So it's kind of scientific goal, kill as many chickens as possible um, with, through scientific means. That is using principles of uh, electricity and using statistics and so on to develop the best way. So four ways of acting, four reasons for acting. I'll go through them one more time. Um, with traditional action, imagine if I ask you, if you, if in your society you eat dinner at the table, why do you eat dinner on the table and not on the floor? Or if in your society you eat on the floor, why do you eat on the floor and not on the table? Possibly because your parents did it, and their parents did it, and their parents did it, and their parents did it. In, in other words, long-standing habits. Long-standing habits are traditions. Um, with effectual stuff, if you've ever been in a fight with somebody when you had like a brain freeze, you lost your mind and went crazy, this would be called this emotional or effectual action. If, uh, for example, you go by a shop and you see they've got a sale on apple cakes, and the, uh, they only cost the equivalent of like 10 minutes work, but, so in Australia that's like five bucks, but you decide, oh hang on, the right thing to do is to make my own apple cake for my friends or for my children or for, for my family, whatever. Even though it's going to cost you about eight bucks more money to make it, you do it because it's the right thing to do. You feel it's the right thing to do. And with Zvek Rational, well that's, you buy the cake for five bucks instead of making it when it costs eight bucks. Now, Weber saw the modern world modernity that is. So we say the fifth period from 1500 onwards as being increasingly dominated by this form. Zweck Rational or Zweck Rationality. Zweck Rationality. Um, he saw this as a disenchant. So this is a negative thing. Even though in anthropology we don't typically make judgments, we suspend judgments. Weber was an early exponent and also a sociologist. He made a judgment. He said this, what's happening in modernity is a terrible thing. It's like an iron cage that descends around all of us. 
and he sees this as a disenchantment of the world. And I'll look at that later in terms of religion, but I want to give some more examples of what I mean by it's very rational. Um, so let's go back to our idea of base structure and superstructure, which I've talked about in other lectures in this series. Excuse me. <coughs> Much better. I'll cover my mouth again. <coughs> Why do I cover my mouth? Because it's the... Either it's tradition. I could effectively go... <coughs> or anything else, but the tra traditional way is to do it like this, tradition. <coughs> so that's a traditional way to cough. Lucky I've got a frog in my throat. So let's return to the idea now. We want to look at uh, Zweck rationality in different aspects of modern life. We're going to start at the base. Um, the simplest way to think about uh, is, is in terms of economy. In the pre-modern period, in the, in the pre-modern period of European history, let's, let's, let's take Europe as an example, uh, the economy was very, if you like, complicated, governed by small areas, different rules, different interactions, different kinds of property ownership, different forms of taxes. And that was the economic form of, if you like, feudalism. Now, from 15, well, let's say, from 1500 onwards, this becomes increasingly rationalized, increasingly rationalized. And by this we mean svet rational, which means the most efficient way to achieve the end. So we get, for example, um, economic systems in which ownership of the land is given to the bourgeoisie, those who are most efficient within the capitalist system of using the, the property. Previously, it hadn't been the most efficient people. It was the people who were thought to be born with blue blood, that is, the aristocracy. So we go from aristocrats to bourgeoisie, to the owners of property. We go from complicated tax systems to increasingly universal and simple tax systems. Maybe more onerous, maybe less onerous, but in any case, much more simple. Uh, and based not on oral rules, but on written laws. Um, so that's the basic kind of economic change which get, takes us from feudalism to capitalism, from pre-modern to modern, from tradition to zweckrational. That's in the economy, we could think about it in terms of law. Uh, this happens earlier in England under the reign of Henry II in particular, but let's say in the medieval period in Europe, there are, the law system is ex extremely complicated. There are little areas with their own laws, own systems, and uh, different procedures for different laws. So if I kill somebody's chicken um, on, a, on a Thursday, it's a different rule. If I kill somebody's pig on a Friday, it's just a different procedure. One, we have five people in a jury. The other people, other case, we don't have a jury, etc. Et et this becomes more uniform, more general, and more abstract throughout all of England. And this is, uh, if you like, the rationalization of the legal system. We also see rationalization of government, where instead of various laws with various kinds of uh, uh, systems of ruling over their, over their uh, subjects, we get the development of a bureaucracy in the form of a state, and equality amongst citizens. So also in government and law. And most particularly, if we like, from the superstructure, from ideology in the realm of thought, we get the development of science, which is looking again for generalized, abstract, and universal laws. So the development of modernity is the development of Svek rationality. This is a profound idea, thanks to Weber. I'm going to repeat it. The development of modernity is the development of spec rationality, which is scientific means for achieving scientific goals. And these are more generalized, more universal, and more abstract. Now, I'm going to talk about this in relation to one of my favorite subjects, which is religion. Generally, the, the process of modernity, the process of rationalization, has been a decline, generally, of 
of religion and a rise of science. But let's just look at religion itself. Let's just look at religion itself. We get, with modernity, a rationalization of religion. Where previously we might have had uh, different takes on Christianity, um, I mean local takes, so you'd have saint worship here, another saint worship there. If I'm ill, I go for one saint. If I'm, um, if I'm, if I've seen, I go to another for this kind of penance. A very complicated and elaborate, and also piecemeal system, which characterises medieval Catholicism. We replace that with a system uh, which is universal. This is Protestantism. There's one God. There's only one way for God, and there's a direct relationship between you and God. We get rid of this intermediate layer, the, the priesthood. There's no need for the priesthood anymore. It's an individual relationship with a divine. And that divine's got taken out of the world where he was imminent and becomes transcendent, something way above us that's inscrutable. In medieval Catholicism, you can see the workings of the God, of God all around you. In Protestantism, Protestantism, typically, you don't see God every day. You'll see him manifest only in rare circumstances. So the divine becomes more transcendent. Uh, but at the same time, religion becomes more trans transportable. You can take your Protestantism easily from England to Massachusetts from England to the USA. If you're worshipping a local saint, it's harder to take her or him over to America. Does that make sense? Because the shrine is in a certain place where you go to every time. If you've gone, if you've moved over there, you can't worship the saint in the same way. So it's transportable. So religion, as it rationalizes, becomes more general, universal, and abstract. Of course, in the long term, Faber sees religion as on the decline and science as replacing it. So I've only looked at a small area and I should say that some anthropologists would disagree that religion is on a dis decline and science is on the rise. And I'll talk about that in another lecture. But the main idea is that modernization is associated with the rise of Zweck rationality, a specific form of rationality which Weber saw as an iron cage that resulted in the disenchantment of the world. It's a very difficult concept to do justice to because I feel it's so important and I don't feel like I've actually captured it enough for you, but hopefully I can inspire you to go and look at other sources. These ideas are a crucial part of my book, The Entangled State, so if you want to see how the ideas are applied, I encourage you strongly to purchase my book and look at this in more detail. Thank you for your attention today. I look forward to, to speaking with you about more ideas and 25 concepts in anthropology.